Hi there, everybody. It's Chris Schmidt from Rocket Lasso, and I have another mini tutorial for you. In fact, this one is a fast forward of a longer tutorial. So if you like this information, make sure you check out the long one where we really go into lots of detail. The plan in this one is to be swapping out complex dynamic objects for some low poly spherical proxies that will run really fast and really accurate. Here we are in Cinema 4D S22, although these techniques should work all the way back to R12.5. You should be covered. This is a pretty straightforward scene file so far. All these gears are generated via extrudes and the cogwheel object, which is a really, really cool spline inside of Cinema. You get all the controls. It automatically determines the distance between the teeth. Works really nicely. In the dynamic tags, which should be identical through all of them, you can see that under collision, they are all inheriting a compound collision shape, meaning in this gear, that small gear and the large gear are both being merged down into one model, which is helpful. And the shape is a moving mesh. So it's expecting to be moving around. The only other big change is under mass, it has a custom mass of one. So these all weigh the exact same amount, no matter what the size of them are. One important thing to know just in general is I'm working at a very, very small scene file. It was kind of a challenge to myself to see if I could get these dynamics to work at a very small size. This ball bearing is the size of a pinball ball and it's as small as 1.35 centimeters so working at a very small scale anyway this is a motor and it's driving from the cylinder to this gear which then pure dynamics will drive into all the rest of the gears so just hitting play we should see this begin to work right away and it's actually working quite well couple things to pay attention to first of all my overall scene calculation if i have controller command d you can see under dynamics under expert that we are still down to five steps per frame. So it's calculating really quickly as you know, really accurately, surprisingly for being at five steps per frame. But I built this very carefully, making sure everything was perfectly lined up. The thing I want to pay attention to though, is our FPS. Currently our frames per second are fluctuating between about 40 and 30, even a little bit lower. Sometimes it will fluctuate depending on how many polygons are colliding with how many other polygons. Now, the important thing to note here is because we are treating these as moving meshes, it's looking at every single polygon. Every polygon here is trying to collide with every other polygon, and they can very easily pass through each other. Now, you saw a little jitter right there, and that's one of the things we're going to be looking out for. Even though this is running pretty well and pretty fast at our frames per second, you can see that this is working really hard to try and spin all of these gears around and it starts eventually passing through itself. And it's because cinema has a lot of trouble. I mean, just calculation wise, it's really hard to tell if one plane is intersecting another plane. It's a very finite amount of information to be capturing. So there's limitations on there as far as the speed that this is taking. And keep in mind, these are very clean gears as far as geometry is concerned. But the calculations are going to take a while and eventually this starts passing through and exploding a little bit. Let's jump over to a different scene file I've got here. It's the same setup, the same scene scale. Everything's pretty much identical. However, now you can see that all of these gears have way more detail. Not only do they have all this internal detail, they're also beveled and there's just, let me hit NB so we can see all this geometry. You can see there's a lot of extra detail all over the place. We got some lighting here, making it a little difficult to see. However, I want to make them all shiny. You can see that there's just a lot more going on in here. However, when we hit play, you're going to see that this is going to run a lot smoother. We're still at five steps per frame. However, with more complicated looking gears, we are running at a hundred and between, well, we're averaging about 115 frames per second here. So this is running way, way smoother. And the difference here is swapping out all of that geometry for spheres. Cinema 4D calculates dynamic spheres incredibly accurately. I've talked about this in other places, but let's go ahead and apply it in this circumstance. I've got an extra gear I turned on, and this one is not built yet. Let's expand it and take a look. In fact, I'm going to temporarily hide gear five, so it's not in our way. You see we have two gears here. It's just two extrudes with a cogwheel all set up, ready to go. As I said, we're in a very small scene file. So we're going to need to make things really tiny to match it. However, let's build out our very quick to calculate sphere version of the dynamics. To begin with, I can create a sphere. This gear is right in the center, so I can do this quickly. T for scaling scale is way down. You see there's now a tiny little sphere in there. And to see it better, middle mouse button as a button. And we can zoom in on this frontal view. And I can see it's right there. And we've got 10 teeth on this cogwheel. And I want this sphere to essentially take the place of one of these cogwheels. I'm gonna eyeball this. I could even move it there right now. Put it kind of in the center of gear, T for scale, and sort of match that. Doesn't need to be perfect. I'll even intentionally be a little bit sloppy here. So there's that sphere. 
it needs a cloner. So new cloner, put a sphere inside of it. That cloner will be set to a radial mode. There are 10 teeth, so we want 10 clones. The radius of this is, I just know for a fact, it's one. Like I said, everything's very small. So it's a radius of one. And the proper orientation, the plane, will be the X, Y plane because we're looking on Z. So you see these spheres are pretty much matching that gear. They're just offset from it. So instead of rotating it, which we could do, I like using this offset. And I can just increase this offset until they look like they're visually right there in center. And there we go. Simple as that. This cloner is set up in the proper spot, renaming it cloner small for the small one. And we might as well set it up for the large one as well. We have these gears. So make a duplicate of that. Copy, paste. This shall be cloner large. There are 40 teeth on that one. I just know for a fact there's 40 of them, which means this cloner large can be set up to 40 teeth. As you increase the number of teeth, we said times four effectively. Four, that was 10. This is 40, so times four. This radius can also be times four, and that should now match that radius. It's just the way gears work. So now those are matching. I can change the offset until that's also matching. That's approximately correct. You can be more accurate if you want to. I'm just going to eyeball that one that way. So excellent. That is looking good. We need to line this up properly to match our other gear. So gear five, I'll bring it back. And inside of gear five, I want to make sure that we can see these cloners, the, the ones existing in there. So now its spheres are visible. So if I go to a top view, I should be able to see that these are actually lined up quite well right now. The small one is lining up accurately with those. The large one, I can just scoot back until they are matching where my gear is right there. So those are now properly placed as far as that is concerned. Now we need to build the dynamic setup. We already saw that these gears are just these extrudes, and this is looking good, but we don't want to run the dynamics on this specifically. So the first step will be putting this into a group, Alt-G, I can group that, and then the cloners can go inside of there. I want this entire setup to become dynamic. Let's rename this to you know, tutorial gear. It needs its dynamic tag. Right-clicking on it, you can add a simulation rigid body, and it's now a rigid body tag. Immediately, we can, under collision, inherit. I don't want to apply a tag to children. I want to be a compound collision shape. Treat them all as one shape. Here's the super important part. The shape is not going to be automatic because then it might look at everything and make it all super crazy. I'm going to say, no matter what you're looking at, look at them as ellipsoids. Look at them as spheres. Now, technically, they could be stretched out spheres, but in this case, we're just using simple round ones, perfectly round ones. Those should now be dynamic. Excellent. We could change the weight. We could change a bunch of other settings all over the place, but really, that's all we need to do for that part. It should be viewing everything here as a sphere and then telling it to behave as a single object locked in. Now, this extra gear, the actual geometry that we have, we don't want that calculating. So here's a really cool trick as well. If we were to copy this dynamics tag to the extra gear, under the dynamics tab, I can just say, don't be enabled. Turn that off. So this dynamics tag won't filter down to this one because that tag now takes over for its children. Now, here's the best part. This gear is actually a child of this parent one that is a compound collision shape. So anywhere this gear goes, if it rotates or moves, this one will go along with it, but it's not being calculated dynamically. So it's just kind of along for the ride, even though it can be placed in the hierarchy in a very simple way. Without changing anything else, we now have brand new dynamic spheres. And even with all these being separate objects, we know cinema doesn't like all of objects, but cloners and spheres just calculate really quickly. And before we hit play, there's one more thing that we have to do, and that is this is not currently connected to anything. If we hit play, it's going to fall away. So we need a connector for that. Really straightforward. This is still at 000. I've just built it that way. So adding a simulation dynamics connector. This is a hinge connector because you're watching the fast forward. I'm assuming you know the basics of this. So dropping that draw size down a little bit smaller, just so we can see it right here. This is only allowed to spin on Z. I can make it a child of the tutorial gear. It just keeps the hierarchy clean. Inside the connect under object, I want this to link the tutorial gear to nothing. That means it's stuck in space here, except it's allowed to spin on Z. Deselect and click play. Immediately you can see it is now part of this dynamic system. Not only is it running at an incredibly fast FPS, it's also running very accurately. This is now running quite quickly. Selecting that gear, you can see how quickly this is spinning. And it is accurately seeing that calculation even at our five steps per frame. So I just think it's such a cool combination. You can push these things so much further and make so much more of them. 
and just a really, really layer and layer all of your dynamics together. So the, the, seeing it in real time just gives you so much better feedback than if it's not quite playing back the way you're expecting. As I said, this is actually kind of a fast forward of an even longer tutorial. So if you liked this information, you want to see even more about scaling everything down, doing these experiments, really walking through it step by step, please make sure to check out the full length version of this tutorial. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, I also do live streams on Wednesdays where I answer questions straight from the community, right from the live YouTube chat and the Twitch chat. So you can come and check that out. If you really like this kind of work, if you found it useful, if it was helpful in a project that you're working on for a client, I have a Patreon set up if you'd like to support there. That is deeply appreciated. But of course, you can see these tutorials are out there for free for everyone. But you get access to the scene files from this if you like reverse engineering things. And there's also bonus live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So in any case, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.